Hey guys, Frank Cox here. I'm the Barbecue Pit Engineer and welcome to the Smoker Builder YouTube channel. So on today's video, I'm gonna show you what happens when guys like me that tell you to keep your pit clean and all that stuff don't do that. And now I gotta come out here and I gotta cook tomorrow. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so a lot of people will say that I'm a hypocrite if they would look at this pit because, like, we got a lot of surface rust. We, you know, inside the grates haven't been scraped. There's a little bit of grease down in the bottom and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, before I started this video, I went and got my ash bucket and my shovel and I cleaned all the ash out of the firebox. Now, complete transparency, I cannot remember the last time I fired this pit up. I fire everything up fairly regular, but I don't know, I probably was like a month ago, I think. So anyway, we're gonna come in here and just like get this thing back up to speed and ready to cook again because I get questions about this all the time and I figured why not take the opportunity to do that. So before we get started, here's what we're gonna need. Uh, first of all, I apologize for the wind noise. I hope my editor can take care of that for me. Um, I don't, I, my microphone died. So, and honestly, if I had to really be transparent with you, I had intended to do this video on bingo. You don't want to see what bingo looks like inside. Anyway, because he's been sitting outside. So this one's been inside the garage. So, but anyway, let's get on into this. And uh, first things first, I'm going to show you a couple things that you're going to need. If you have a raw pit that was oiled down at one point, and now you're going to try to breathe some life back into it. And I'm going to get a little bit controversial here. So here we go. Now, First things first, you do not have to like come in here and like sand this down or do any cleanup on it. Matter of fact, rust, whatever's sitting on this, dust, stuff like that, I'm just gonna oil right over the top of that. There's no point in doing any extra labor to this. In my personal opinion, that oil is gonna make this thing look even better than it did before, especially if you look right over here underneath of my beer can. So that brings us to thing number one, you're gonna need a beverage because I never do anything barbecue without a beer in my hand anyway, or whatever you decide you want to drink. And by the way, today's koozie is brought to you by Ozark Valley Wagyu. That's my friends down the road here, about 20 miles. They make some great Wagyu products. Hang 10. So the second thing you're gonna need <clears throat> is gonna be some kind of a grill cleaning brush. Now, my friends over at Boyer Brush, my boy Sylvester gave this to me. As a matter of fact, if you're, if you're as crafty as I am, right there. You'll scan that QR code right there and that'll take you to Boyer Brush or just type it in. This brush is phenomenal. The second thing you're gonna need is uh, some oil of some kind. Now, this is the controversial part of this video. Um, you know, my buddy Jeremy Yoder is anti-linseed oil. Um, I'm not really anti-anything. I just want my pit to be oiled. Now, um, getting into the metalworking and fabrication side of this a little bit, um, Essentially what you're trying to do is protect the surface of this material so that it doesn't delaminate from rusting and like just corrosion, right? So you can use a number of things. There's a whole crowd of people that is like food safe, um, only food safe things on my smoker. Totally get it. I'm gonna explain that a little bit. Um, there's a whole nother crowd of us is like, you know, the birds poop on it when you leave it outside. Uh, you know, we're gonna paint the thing. Paint is also toxic. Um, by the way, carcinogens, I mean, the, the last video I did about this got over a million views in no time at all. And I, you should see some of the nastiness that happened. As a matter of fact, it's still going on my Facebook channel. It's a real. Um, but anyway, here's, here's a couple of reasons that I use the things that I say I use. Okay, the first thing is the easiest way to oil your pit is with PAM or some kind of uh, aerosol spray. Whatever it is, you can spray this pit down with that stuff. And here's the sequence. What you do is you spray the thing down while it's cold, heat the unit up and get it up hot. You need all of the surfaces that are in contact with oil to smoke. When they smoke, they're hot enough that they're gonna start to polymerize or whatever the scientific term is there. Basically what it's gonna happen is it's gonna dry out and cure. So it's not gonna be wet and sticky. And uh, that's how you know you got it hot enough. Um, basically the same process you would use with an iron skillet if you're gonna try to get that thing safe, uh, like to cook on and like get all the sticky out of it. Um, now, 
on my side of the fence, I don't really care what it is. Basically, I'm looking for a cool factor with this thing. If you use some kind of a spray like Pam or canola oil or something like that, all of those oils are gonna get really dark, if you like black dark, and that's really cool too. Um, but some of the time, I want this patina to show through. Um, what I prefer to do, and here it is, go ahead and hit me in the comments, Brand X boiled linseed oil. Okay, why do I choose this particular thing? Now, there is petroleum in this. Uh, it's like, it's a non-food safe, uh, like a mineral oil of some kind that's in there. And I've also heard it's been cut with lacquer thinner. I'm not gonna get into weeds and go chemical with you. I could give a shit, honestly. Basically what this thing is, is it's an oil, and whenever it heats up, it gets bronze colored. Matter of fact, that rusty surface on this thing is gonna pop and it's gonna look so cool. Something else that we've done on several of these legend offsets, if you ever see uh, some of my buddies like Roy Elkins, uh, our rooster is his name on Instagram, a few guys like that, we took an, and uh, used a bluing compound, which is like bluing a gun barrel, and we went over that whole entire, it's called blacking is what we use from Jack's Chemical. And we blacked that entire surface of this material. Uh, first, you gotta get 100% of the oil off of it. And then you can put that stuff on there and it hyper rusts. But the cool thing about it is it gets this really awesome brindle and blue rusty kind of cool color going on. It's almost marbled looking. Then you neutralize that and you rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse and you get that, that chemical reaction to stop by neutralizing the reaction. And then you can go in there with a product like this, watch that thing pop, it looks beautiful. So this is not a plug and me telling you to use boiled linseed oil, I'm just telling you what I like. And I do not give a care in the world if this is actually food safe or not, because I'm gonna cure it and I'm only putting it on the outside of the pit. That's really important to point out here. Never ever use anything that's not food safe on the inside of your cooker. I mean, sure, if you leave food in there and grease in there and it molds and it gets nasty, that's not food safe either. So it's actually like bad, bad. That's what botulism came from and stuff like that as far as I know. So uh, what you wanna make sure and do is keep your stuff clean, right? Uh, which is part of this video. It's already getting about seven minutes long on the raw recording, so I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but stay there, we're gonna do the whole process. So anyway, how do you apply this stuff? So there's a million different ways. First of all, before we get into that, I wanna point out something. This stuff will spontaneously combust in the sun. This is the second thing I get yelled at constantly about in the comments. Um, when you put boiled linseed oil on a towel or any kind of a cloth, and you crumple it up, and then you put it in a trash can or put it on the concrete or leave it in the garage, whatever, that there's a heat that it starts to cook and it starts to boil off or, and like evaporate and things like that. And eventually at a very low temperature, it will actually combust, right? And catch on fire. I've actually had that happen in the bed of my truck one time. Fortunately, my truck was empty and I just saw the smoke. So I was able to react really quick and go get it. How do you deal with the towel when you're done? There's a couple different ways. One way is to lay it completely flat over something that's not gonna catch on fire, like the handle of a dolly, um, a metal trash can, something like that. Set it over something out in the yard and let the sun dry it out. The second way to deal with that is you could actually saturate it with water and then just like crumple it up and then put it somewhere or saturate it with water and lay it out flat. It doesn't really matter dispose of it. Third way to do it is to actually burn it. Just go ahead and just throw it in the fire. Who cares? Like if you've got a, a burn pile going with a brush fire or something like that, just throw it in the fire and burn it up. It's done. You don't have to worry about it. Just do not ever take anything that you had in contact with linseed oil that can combust like cardboard, wood, uh, towels, cloths. Don't throw them in a trash can and walk away. It's a bad deal. Um, Anyway, another thing you wanna make sure and do before I forget is you wanna wear some kind of gloves. My hands are like leather, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really react to this stuff, but I don't like it on my hands. But some people that have softer skin and stuff like that or actually have allergies and stuff, 
um, sensitive skin, you need to make sure and wear some kind of gloves. This stuff's not pleasant on your hands and it can start to burn your hands just like catching the rag on fire. So you want to make sure and wear some kind of nitrile latex. I don't care. Hit me in the comments. Whatever kind of gloves you think you need to wear, wear the, wear the appropriate ones. Follow. Matter of fact, there's all this stuff that happens in the in the world and we have to always protect ourselves. And this company took the time out of their day to put all kinds of uh, safety garbage on the side, both sides. Look, there's a little fine print, there's a little fine print, there's a whole bunch more on the back. Read all of that, it's sold in the store, it's okay to sell it, so it must be okay to use it. And uh, read all the instructions and make sure that you're not getting hurt. Now, uh, another thing you can do with this oil there's two other ways to apply it besides the way I'm doing it today. I don't have any kind of a spray device for this thing. Usually I just use like an old, uh, like a little garden sprayer, kind of a foot foot bottle we used to call them. Um, you can get one of those bottles. It doesn't really like atomize as it's coming out like water would, um, but it comes out in a stream. The basic deal is, is just get it on there, take a towel and wipe it around a whole bunch, right? A second way to do that would be with uh, a foam uh, paint roller, like a four inch foam paint roller and a little tub. Now, when you're putting it on though, do not put it on too thick. If you put it on real heavy, it's going to take a long time for that stuff to, to polymerize and heat up all the way and, and get unsticky. We're going to put a really, really, really thin coat on here. And then you can go in here and heat this cooker up. Same process Jeremy uses on his video, heat the cooker up, get the whole thing smoking. And then surfaces that do not smoke, we're actually gonna hit those with the torch. I've got a weed burner torch here. I'm probably not gonna do it all today because I'm not really too worried about it, but if this is your cooker and you're trying to do this process and you don't want the, the legs and the casters and all that plates and stuff down there to be sticky, just heat them up with a torch or whatever and uh, just get that smoking. Now, it's not gonna polymerize the same way that the oil will on the cook chamber as it's getting hot from the inside out, but it's at least gonna take a little bit of the sticky out of it. Enough of that. Let's get this freaking cooker uh, fixed up. I hope I took care of the safety police and whoever you are in the comments. Let's get this cooker looking good. So anyway, I'm gonna get started on this. And as with all things, a little bit goes a long way. Sometimes what you can do is actually fold this towel in half uh, or quarters or something. And then you can just use that little spot. But I ain't too worried about it. I'm just gonna put it on there. This ain't rocket science. And then the more of this you do, the more saturated this towel is gonna get. There it is right there. It's a real bronze color when it comes out. Pour a little, see if you can see. Yeah, I hope you saw it there. Anyway, now, all we're gonna do is just like I said, we're just gonna wipe it on. Check it out. I'm gonna get that camera up here close where you can see it. The thicker you put it on, the longer it's gonna take for it to set up. Um, something else I probably would not necessarily recommend doing is getting it down inside your hinges and stuff because as it hardens up, it actually does set up like a glue almost. As far as the brands of this stuff goes, I don't really think any one brand is any better than the other. Here, I'm gonna back this up now and I'm just gonna go to town. Here. There we go, that didn't take long at all. And once more, like this towel right here now, if I was to just let this crumple up and sit around, it might be a day, two days, who knows? This thing could actually just spontaneously combust. So for the guys in the comments that are like carcinogen and make sure and blah, 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 let's just get rid of it, okay? So we'll make it go away, lay it out flat. I actually do have a brick burn pile over here that is already on fire and I'm gonna throw this in it. Okay, there you go, guys. I took care of it. It's gone. So 
anyway, just be careful in all seriousness. Those things will catch on fire. I've had it happen. Um, don't, don't be, read the bottle. Okay, now I'm gonna reset the camera and we're gonna go ahead and build a fire in here that's big enough to go ahead and uh, dry or uh, polymerize, let this stuff start smoking this fire here real quick. So stay tuned. 